Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast, America's number one podcast for new real estate investors, where we know that finding discounted properties is the most proven path to financial freedom. I am your host, Brent Daniels, Mr. TTP, Mr. Talk to People, and I am telling you this, if I can do this, so can you. So let's get started. I'm going to start and I'm going to read this word for word because the definition of this word is it fits perfectly with the person that I have on the podcast today because I've got an incredible wholesaler out of Lansing, Michigan, and the word resilience resilience is just absolutely perfect. Resilience is the psychological quality that allows some people to be knocked down by the adversities of life and come back at least as strong as before, rather than letting difficulties, traumatic events, or failure overcome them and drain their resolve. Highly resilient people find a way to change course, emotionally heal, and continue moving towards their goals goals. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast, Jataren Moore. How are you? I'm good, Brent. How are you doing? <laughs> I am fantastic. Good. I am so glad that you are here. I mean, you have an incredible story. You you started out, you didn't have a huge budget, mm -hmm. and you were able to literally just put in the work, make the calls, have the conversations, fail forward over and over and over and over to the point where yes. you just had a fantastic month yes. with over $30,000 yes. in assignment fees. Mm -hmm. And it's just absolutely incredible because the story is even better. And I'm excited to unpack this. So for everybody out there, yes. tell us about you. Tell us tell us what, what is your background and how did you find your way to be a real estate entrepreneur? Yes. So kind of just a little overview by myself. I grew up in Muskegon Heights, Michigan, and I um, went to Lansing for college. So sure. I graduated from Michigan State University in 2019. And from there, I thought I wanted to become a doctor and OBGYN, but I quickly realized, no, that's not uh, what my real passion was. That's not what um, God had in plan for sure. me. So I realized in 2020, I needed to make some type of change. And um, I had been in and out of jobs. I mean, from mental health uh, to Children's Protective Services. Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't doing anything for me. It wasn't really giving me the um, financial freedom that I had been looking for. Sure. And so I stumbled across real estate in early in 2021 by listening to first Dave Ramsey and then Robert Kiyosaki. So I found both of them and ordered a few books. And from there, I, I just got motivated. And uh, yeah. So where do you think that seed comes from, that seed mm -hmm. in your brain that made you want to have the financial freedom? You know what I mean? Wanted, yeah. wanted more, wanted to really you know, go out there and build a successful business. Where, where, did, where does that come from? Yeah, so I mean, because I don't come from a background where, you know, I didn't grow up in a luxury type of uh, household or, you know, city. So I've always wanted that for myself because one, I just desire nice things. Mm -hmm. And two, um, I just know I had to work for it. So I, I guess my drive and um, really just wanting that financial freedom actually came from when I lost my mom in mm. 2020 so she passed away and you know me I was able to depend on both my mom and dad financially so when I lost her I'm like okay I have to figure out how to actually fend for myself as well as still be able to help with my brother and my father so I said you know what I need to make a change with how I'm managing my finances, how I'm building my finances, and then how this is going to actually pave the way for me and my father and my dad. So real estate was that. And I said, you know what? It's on. It's on. Yeah. And then from there, I've just been trying to do all of the research I can do. Incredible. Mm -hmm. So what, you went on YouTube, you went on podcasts, did you, yeah. was it one of those things where you're like, what is the best business to start right now? Did mm -hmm. you go down that? 
that rabbit hole and then find real estate or did you, yeah. you go okay who's talking about money oh it's dave ramsey okay i'm mm-hmm. listening to him and then robert kiyosaki popped on there like how does that go yeah so i just want to pull this thread you know because yeah. i think that this is probably a common story with a right. lot of the people that are listening and watching this right is you know you're it starts with okay how do I get financial freedom? How mm-hmm. do I get control of my life? Mm-hmm. And then you start looking for and you start researching and certain things come across your radar. And yeah. then all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's mm-hmm. that's the path that I want to go. Yes. So I found. OK, so when I found Dave, Ram, uh, Dave Ramsey. Yes. So I'm just like and I will never forget January of 2020. I'm just going hard um actually 2021 i'm sorry going hard with his youtube videos and i'm like well dave ramsey doesn't really like credit so i'm like uh but i know there's a lot of millionaires billionaires that utilize credit you know for their benefits so i'm like i don't know so as i'm continuing to watch um youtube there's recommended videos that pop up and i see robert and i'm like okay let me see what this man is all about Mm -hmm. so i literally just started watching his youtube videos and i had never read before 2021 couldn't stand reading but uh, rich dad poor dad just mm-hmm. kept popping up all over youtube and i'm like man do i really have to read this book do, <laughs> do i need to dive into some reading to actually take my knowledge further so i did and so i ordered that book and um i read it and from there i'm like you know what real estate is it but how do i get into this right. uh i thought about airbnbs and i'm like and i still want to do that but i'm like no i can't do that right now because I don't have, you know, money at the at that time I didn't have any money and credit uh, yeah, now I have to work on that. So, I'm like I can't do any of this and I know that's what real estate requires. Sure. So, in April, um I saw the Wholesaling Inc YouTube channel in April of mm-hmm. 2021 and I'm like, "What is this? What is wholesaling?" Um and I could I'm like this is not true. You cannot make money just by getting some contracts and selling a contract for a higher price and making a profit. I said no. But um, I just researched that as a CPS investigator at work, just like this is crazy and this is what I'm about to do. So I made a plan during Mm -hmm. the summer of 2021 to continue just um, preparing myself for wholesaling. And that's what I did. And I got out of that position just in the middle of nowhere, I yeah. quit. Yeah. I quit. I quit my children's protective services job. And in August, I quit. And then in September, I started with TTP. I love it. Yeah. I love that story. And I think it's really important. You know, when you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, mm-hmm. um, it it changes your the way that you think about real estate, but it doesn't show you what you should do with it. Right. You know what I mean? It yes. goes into, okay, well, owning the properties or flipping yes. the properties, doing that thing. But the real, the, the the secret to that book is you have to find discounted properties. Right. You have to find great opportunities. Yes. And that's really all wholesaling is. I yep. think wholesaling is, is mostly, um, mo- most people think the definition of wholesaling real estate is assigning the deal. Mm-hmm. And, and I understand that because that's right. how you get your income to, to build your business, mm-hmm. to be able to have the down payments for your Airbnbs yes. or to be able to uh, pay off some debt so that you can increase your credit score, whatever right. it is, exactly. so, so that you can expand it or just show more income so that you can get more um, traditional financing from mm-hmm. conventional banks. Right. Um, but you have to get the cash first. You have to. That was always my mystery. I read this yeah. as a kid and I was like, okay, great. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm 20 years old. I'm reading this book. I'm so pumped. I want to do something. But I didn't know what to do. Right. I'm telling everybody out there listening and watching this, listen, <laughs> the foundation of your real estate business is finding the deals, yes. is wholesaling. Mm-hmm. It is the table that we eat off of. Yes. For real. That's it. You know what I mean? Like... Most people don't really think about it too often. They're just like, oh, yeah, I want to do this Airbnb or rental or fix and flip and all these things. Mm -hmm. But if you understand and take the first year, and I really believe this, take the first 12 months to build a business Mm -hmm. that's focused on finding ugly houses and getting big checks, you're going to be set for life. Mm -hmm. Because that is a skill that if you keep honing and building and then all of a sudden build a machine, a company around, being able to find these incredible opportunities, Mm -hmm. that's 
where you get the financial freedom. Right. That's when you start taking those properties off the board, yes. keeping them and building the wealth, not just your riches. Exactly. The income equals riches, right? That you could be rich by a bunch of cash, mm -hmm. but wealthy, that's when we buy the assets and let those assets uh, make the money. Yes. Now we're not in it every day. Right. That's the financial freedom. That's, that's, that's the, you know, when when we're building our business, we have to go out and we have to work. We have mm -hmm. to make the calls. We yep. have to go on the appointments. Yes. We have to comp the properties. We have to sell them to buyers or we have to fix them up and flip them and all these other things. Yes. But once we own these and we have people paying us rent, now yeah. that thing is making money for itself. Yes. It's independent. Mm -hmm. That is that is the path. Yes. That's, that's it. where you're going. That's where that's I want to be. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing. And so you started out. You had a you 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 didn't even have a budget for a dialer. No, 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 no. I didn't have a you money for nothing. I literally quit. Yep. CPS got my last eight hundred dollar check from them, mm -hmm. and um, started TTP. And how I pay for the program is my refund check from Michigan State University because <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I'm in my master's degree program. Sure. And I said. I'm going to use this refund check to take my life to the next level. And mm -hmm. so I invested in myself, and mm -hmm. I will never look back. You did. I'm not looking back. You did. <laughs> well, you came out firing. So just yeah. so that everybody knows, um, Jatiran joined uh, TTP, mm -hmm. uh, the TTP coaching program. And I think you texted me probably five times a day. I did. And, <laughs> I but, did, but it was all I did. Well, everybody gets my phone number, mm -hmm. and, and but you were texting me actual leads yes you were yep. you were you were you went right into it you right jumped in. right into i just want to get on the phone if i get on the phone with yep. people i know i'm gonna win yes and it, you do you know how long that usually takes people to figure out like it oh. takes years Ugh. for some people to figure out you did it instinct yeah. it was instinct for you yeah it was innate mm -hmm. it was like you were ready you were already there you're like just put me on and <laughs> and everybody in lansing michigan won 50 grand for every deal i'm like <laughs> To Taryn, you got to get yeah. it at 20 grand, 25, yeah. 15, whatever. Yes. And then finally, finally, boom, 90 days in, you started cracking them. Just cracking yep. them. Cracking yep. them all. Yep. Yes. Yep. And uh, so let's talk about that. Let's let's get into the nitty gritty details. Okay. So um, you were hand dialing. I hand out. I went to Best Literally, Buy. Literally. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. So I went to Best Buy and I got um, a little prepaid phone. And that I pay twenty dollars a month uh, to use un unlimited uh, calls and texting. Mm -hmm. So I use that from September until December of twenty twenty one, and that's how I did my first three deals, mm -hmm. just hand dialing because I couldn't afford a dialer. And what was your record for amount of calls that you made in a day that you literally put in mm -hmm. the the ten digit number yes. and called how many times? One hundred and fifty times. Hundred and fifty yes. times. Yes. That is incredible. Yeah. I'm telling you, I know because uh hand dialing is how I started mm -hmm. and like fifty I was exhausted. Yeah, it's tiring. One fifty is like wow. Yeah. That's incredible. But you had that fire. I mean you just had that fire in your belly that you were like, you know what, I am going to find an opportunity. I'm gonna find a deal. Yep. And, yeah. and it does. And it happens. Listen, it's 100%. I am telling you this all right now. It is 100%. If you have enough quality conversations with distressed property owners, you will win. Yes. You will. Bottom line. You don't have to have a huge budget. No. $20 <laughs> at Best Buy. That's it. You, you, you probably spent the rest of it on a list that you got skip traced. Yeah. So I there's drove a couple for dollars. Hundred bucks. Talk about it. Yep. So walk people through this. So yeah. who were you calling mm -hmm. and um, how'd you get the numbers and all that? Let's break that down. Yeah. So I started off, I just went driving for dollars. So that was actually my main list from September until um, December. And starting out, I pulled too much data. Remember, I'm hand dialing. So I actually, in the first week of joining the coaching program, I had my driving for dollars list and vacant properties. And I'm like, wait, this is a lot of information. Mm -hmm. And so I just focused on driving for dollars. Yeah. So that's basically what I did. Just drove for the dollars. Dro dro and, and explain what, it, what does that mean? So you're driving around mm -hmm. and... Driving around. So I drove around in Lansing in my market, and I'm just looking for houses that looked like they needed some love yeah. or that were just ugly properties, yeah. distressed properties. Yeah, sure. And I um, 
use Deal Machine. Mm -hmm. So I use Deal Machine apps to keep track of all of my properties. And then at the end, I just uploaded that list and skip traced it. Well, at, not skip traced it. I just got the information and then um, hand dial it. Yeah. Now I'm skip tracing and using it into putting it into so the dialer. So were you using but... like a free resource online for the phone numbers? No, you were, no. You were pulling the phone numbers from a skip tracing. Yes. Yeah, so okay. I, yeah, I was. Yep. Got it. Mm -hmm. So then you'd call them up, ask them if they would consider an offer, and then yeah. just over and over and over and yes. over. Yes. Where were you making these calls? In I want to like visualize this. <laughs> yeah, in, in my living room. In it, my living room. And first, when I first started off, um, I didn't have a desk or anything, so I just did it at my dining room table. Yep. And then I would sometimes do it in the bedroom. But now I have a desk, and so I just called from at home. home it, when no. you were alone, no. you just called when you were alone. You were just when by I was yourself alone. Mm -hmm. at your kitchen table mm -hmm. making calls. Making calls. That's one of the hardest things ever. Yeah. Do you realize that? Yeah. No, I mean it's... you're doing it, but it is really, really, really difficult. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you 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 have these you, you have your spaces right? right your your house is your space and then all of a sudden you're like okay I'm at my kitchen table now it feels awkward at first just calling people up and asking them if they would consider offers right but you got to push through that I did how do you do that how did you push through um just, me for me it was just me knowing that okay I have to do something and do something quick mm -hmm. um I didn't want to have to depend on the security anymore of like a bi-weekly check or anything mm -hmm. and so I just had to push myself I even though it was in the comfort of my home i closed my bedroom door if i had to if i was getting um uh looking at my bed and trying to like okay i want to go lay down but no i closed the bedroom door and i like i just need to go into the dining room and get started and just make my phone call so that i can have some progress with this and it worked out yeah. <laughs> it worked out it definitely mm -hmm. worked out yeah so before we go into the deal breakdown mm -hmm. and ring this bell, yeah. what's the big vision? What do you see? What do you see? This is this is the first step on your real estate journey mm -hmm. is, is is getting the proof of concept, right? right? Is making sure that you you cross that bridge from faith to fact that right. you know you can do this. You can do it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. What's the big plan? Yeah, you think about this. You, I, I know you do, but yes. I mean, five years, ten years, <laughs> oh, fifteen yeah. years, twenty years, fifty years. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? What is, what what is the big goal yeah. that you're working towards? Right. I definitely want to um, own some properties, but that's def that's not even my big goal. I want to give back. At heart, I am a coach, I'm a mentor, and so all of this information that I'm taking in as in my journey, mm -hmm. all of these things that I'm learning, I want to be able to serve and give back to people who are in my situation or who are in the situation that I was in coming into the program. Sure. So ultimately in about five to 10 years when I'm, you know, continuing to wholesale, I want to be able to provide the same value to other people. I love so it. So I want to be a coach. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And own property. And own property. Do you have an idea of how many properties you want to own? Right now in my head is 10. Okay. Yeah. So, awesome. I mean, yeah, but I think my biggest thing is just going to be on building a wholesale business and yeah. being a coach. Yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. And listen, those 10 properties could be giant commercial buildings. Yes, you know what I mean? You, I never know. It, it, yeah. could be, it could be a high-rise building. It mm -hmm. could be you know, a mall or something. You know what I mean? Yes. Like people, I think people get stuck on, oh, I need 400 or a thousand doors or whatever else. Me? See? I would rather own 10 properties yes. that are like, you know, huge. Exactly. That, you know, that's, that's, I love that. Yeah. I love that philosophy. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. So let's break down a deal. Okay. Let's do it. Let's break down a deal. Okay. So what deal do you want to break down? My very first one. <laughs> okay. The first deal. Yeah. Okay. My first one. Um, So... I started TTP September 8th. I'll never forget the dates. Mm -hmm. And September 10th, I had my first contract. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I started dialing and dialing, and I got that contract. And this is what um, my TT TTP family calls rare because the seller was motivated and ready to go. So um, I was able to get the four pillars, price, mm -hmm. motivation, timeline, condition mm -hmm. in that one conversation. Mm -hmm. So then I got the appointment and he was ready to sign that day. Yep. Um, but I locked it up too high. <laughs> so okay. I locked up the, uh, the property too high. And um, so I still had it under contract and it had been under contract for a little while. Oh my goodness. This, this deal had took me to the moon and back. But, um, 
So I was in the middle of also trying to build my cash buyers list sure. because I didn't have a buyers list. So yeah. I'm just making calls to people who have made cash purchases in Lansing within the last year. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was sending out the information for the property. I had a couple buyers come by and they're like, oh, yeah, this is a lot of work. Um, it needs too much work. I would never pay this. And I'm like, you know what, Jatiren, I'm not about to let this discourage me. Somebody's going to want this property. It was a distressed property. Mm-hmm. I know somebody wants it so what I had to do is I went back and um I had to renegotiate with the seller Mm -hmm. and so he came down uh so it was locked up at forty thousand dollars and so I had included a fee of ten thousand dollars so I had it at fifty thousand dollars to my cash buyers and they were not having it so I ended up renegotiating with the seller down to thirty two thousand dollars Now, let me ask you, Mm -hmm. where did this lead come from? Is this a driving for dollars lead? Driving for dollars. So, okay, so you got this driving for dollars lead. You call him up. Mm -hmm. Is the first conversation he he wants to sell? He was ready. He's ready. Yes. He's waiting for your call. Waiting. He said, oh, yeah, I'll go ahead and sell it. I met with him that day. I went out on the You went out right away. Right away. That same day. The same I love day. That. Mm-hmm. And he's like, Yeah, for this price, for forty grand, it's yours. It's mine. Yeah. Okay. That's what he said. And then you have to go back. You you're putting it in front of everybody. They're saying, yeah. Hey, listen, it's too high. Did mm-hmm. they give you a price that they would buy it at? Oh yeah. Some some of them said that they they needed it to be at fifteen thousand. Right. <laughs> Somebody said, Well, can you do like twenty thousand? I'm like, eh, I'm gonna negotiate. I'm just gonna go back and talk with the seller to see what I can do and I'll let you guys know. Sure. So that's basically what I did. Yeah. yeah. I had about four buyers come out and look at it. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh forty two, you got it down to thirty uh, forty thousand, mm-hmm. you got it down to thirty two. Yes. And at that point you were able to find a buyer? I was. Yeah. And how I found my buyer is crazy, Brent. So I found my buyer driving for dollars. Yes. <laughs> Yes, so I had another property I had been following up with for about three weeks in September, and I kept calling the owner, and I'm like, hey, will you consider an offer? He's like, yes, and I kept following up. He's like, give me a call next week, give me a call next week. Mm -hmm. Kept following up, and he's like, the third week of September, you know what, I'm just going to keep this property, but do you happen to have any properties that you're interested in selling? I said, oh my goodness, this has to be the Lord, because what? I said, yes, I have a property that I'm interested in selling. So he's like, well, what's the address? And so I gave him the information, and he was like, that's perfect. I'm right around the corner. I'm driving over there now. And so he went. He goes over to the property, and he was like, is it open? And I said, yes, it's open. You go right in and look at it. So I stayed on the phone with him as he's walking through the property, and he's like, I want it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's like, I want it. What's your price on it? And so I said, um, if I'm remembering right, I think I said about, I can't remember what I put it at. I think I told him at like 37. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, that's the price you put it out at. What's your best offer? And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. He was he was a feisty one. So I was like, okay, well, um, let me I'm going to get back with you and see what I can do. Mm -hmm. And so I ended the conversation and I um, contacted the seller back. And so. Um, actually, I think that's what I told him. I didn't even call the seller back. I'm like, Jatara, you need to, you know, be a stickler and let this buyer know that this is what it's going to be. Don't get pushed around. Yeah, I'm not getting pushed around. So I ended up um, recalling him back, and he he was he was not having it though. So I had to continue. I had to negotiate with him essentially. Sure. Yeah. So I did, and um, I ended up getting the property. Or he ended up taking the property at thirty five. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was able to get the property under contract. No, I'm sorry, Brent. Thirty four. Because it was a, yeah, it was a two thousand dollar assignment fee. Right. Yeah. So I ended up getting it at thirty four, and he was interested. And it wasn't even him that bought the property; it was his brother. Got it. Yeah. So he let his brother know about the property. So I met with him, and he happens to own a restaurant in Lansing, and he gave me dinner every time I came uh, there. But... Yeah. So yeah, it all it worked out. But yeah. So the here's the thing: there mm-hmm. is no problem. Mm-hmm. S- negotiating with a buyer if you only have one buyer that's looking at it. Exactly. You know what I mean? Right, now, right. what we want to do is build a robust cash buyer database yes. so that 
they're fighting for these deals. But Absolutely. if you're only negotiating with one, yeah, or, or, or if only one person is interested, or one party, or one company, or whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. or whatever the situation is, fine. That's fine. Make it happen. Yes. Make it happen. Mm-hmm. Seller gets their property sold. Yep. This buyer gets a great deal. Mm-hmm. You get proof of concept. Two thousand dollars. Yes. And then from there you springboarded onto a way bigger deal. Way and bigger. A way bigger deal. Way so, bigger. I mean, it, that's the start though. Yes. It's just getting rolling. And that was two days. Two days of two days calling into it. and I had a contract. Bring that back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes i love it yes i love it i love it i mean yeah. listen to 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 get into this business mm-hmm. and to get a list of of properties and just to hand dial them until you win yeah. i mean resilience i'm just telling you being resilient in, in this business not letting the fear of rejection yes. the fear of failure the fear fear of people being mad at us listen yeah. our brains are higher hard wired we they're they to to be in a tribe mm-hmm. right and anytime that we feel like we're getting out of the tribe our brain goes wacky right. and that's what happens when we get rejected that's mm-hmm. what happens when people are mean to us or yes. whatever else we're like oh my gosh mm-hmm. am i getting kicked out of the tribe that's what our that's what our brain thinks and yep. if you just get logical with it yes. and just understand that there are certain people that you can help and certain people that just aren't ready yet. Right. That's it. That's it. That's it. Then you can go forward with the confidence knowing mm-hmm. that your efforts are going to get a return on the investment. Yes. And they For will. Real. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's so exciting when it happens, too. When you get the check or the wire, it's like, boom, it's real. So now <laughs> you are not hand dialing, obviously, because you've had success. You're yes. using a dialer. How yes. is that going? absolutely phenomenal (laughs) my time is being used (laughs) better now that i have a dialer and i love it i love using the dialing system i love it Mm -hmm. and listen just for anybody that is maybe brand new to this i just want to explain a couple different things um when jeteran's talking about a cash buyers that is people in every market are Mm -hmm. looking to buy investments for rentals or fix and flip it's yeah. one of the two right or they're they've got a they've got their own list of 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 buyers that they want to take your deals and sell it to to mm-hmm. their buyers and make some some money there so there's some different strategies but in every market there is cash buyers mm-hmm. you find them you, you build relationships with them and what we do is we find the properties for these cash buyers mm-hmm. right that's all wholesaling is because these a lot of the most of the cash buyers do not want to deal with the emotions of the seller mm-hmm. that's our job yep and until they want to deal with the emotion not in I say deal with emotions. It's not even that. It's really like they just don't want to be involved in it at all. It's not mm-hmm. dealing with them. These are human beings. But right. I mean, it's it's they 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 don't want to do that job because they want to focus on fixing up properties and running their construction crews and running their property management and do that. Mm-hmm. They don't want to do the marketing. That's right. where we come in. Right. And that's why we find these incredible opportunities. And we have the opportunity to close on these things. Yes. We have the ability. Yeah. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful business. Business, if you set it up right with the foundation of of going out there and building a machine to source these deals. Yes. That's what you're doing. That's what I'm doing. Change my life. It's incredible. Yes. It's incredible. Well, you know, give people that are just starting out mm-hmm. some advice here. Okay. I mean, yeah. you just you just started out <laughs> four months ago. Yes, just so, four months ago. So what an inspiration. Three deals closed in yes. four months. Yes. Hand dialing. Hand dialing. Now you're on fire. Yes. Your pipeline of leads is going bananas. Yes. You flew into Phoenix mm-hmm. and and sent me a picture of you calling from your hotel room <laughs> yes. when you got into town. <laughs> yes. I, I wouldn't even do that. Yeah. I get off a flight and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to just like lay down or I need to do something. Yeah. Like I'm just not at you, not you. You got that fire. You got that sparkle in your eyes. You're going crazy. You know? Yes. So uh, give advice to people that are just starting out, that are very inspired mm-hmm. um, and, and what the last 120 days meant to you. Yes. Yeah. So anybody just starting out, my biggest piece of advice would be just to do it. Mm-hmm. A lot of people I hear in myself included, analysis paralysis. I just want to take in all of this information, but 
in reality, you're just sitting on the information and you're not acting on it. That's and what it. It, what it, what does it take? It takes action in order to get the results, mm -hmm. you know, that you desire. So I would just say, go out and do it. Stop waiting. Yep. Just stop waiting. Go out and do it. If you have any questions, res resources are unlimited. Yep. I call YouTube, YouTube University. Sure. It's a, a phenomenal amount of information on there that mm -hmm. can at least get you started. Just do it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you for being on here. Yes, no problem. Um, a couple things to the to the audience. Um, Deal Machine is a driving for dollars app. Mm -hmm. It's the best one, and uh, they really love the Rhino Tribe. They love TTP. They love Wholesaling Inc. And we get the biggest discounts. So if you're going to use an app, DealMachine.com, make sure you use the coupon code TTP. It's the biggest discount that they have. Mm -hmm. And if you are interested in joining the most proactive group in real estate investing, it is the TTP coaching program. It is the TTP family. Go to WholesalingInc.com forward slash TTP. That's WholesalingInc.com forward slash TTP. Check out what it it's all about check out the incredible people that are doing amazing business throughout the country that I've had the absolute pleasure of coaching. And uh, if it feels good in your gut, sign up for a call and I look forward to working with you personally. Until next time, I always encourage you to go out there and talk to people. Love you guys. See ya.